This Week at NASA The Antares rocket remains at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport's Pad 0A at the Wallops Flight Facility, awaiting launch of its first test flight under NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or COTS, program. Orbital Sciences Corporation canceled the countdown during Wednesday's initial launch attempt when a data umbilical connection prematurely separated from the rocket. Also on Wednesday, two events for media to learn more about the mission and activities at Wallops, Deputy Administrator Lori Garver spoke with traditional media during a media roundtable, and at a NASA social, Administrator Charlie Bolden connected with NASA social media followers. On this demonstration flight, Antares will carry a simulated Cygnus spacecraft to orbit. The real Cygnus will deliver cargo to the International Space Station. Progress on final assembly and integration of the Orion spacecraft was showcased for news here. media at the Kennedy Empty Space Center's Bay. Operations Family and Checkout Building. KSC Director Bob Space Cabana Center's and others history. detailed the status of NASA's next space capsule and its uncrewed Exploration Flight Test 1, scheduled for next year. EFT-1, which will send Orion some 3,600 miles into space, will test the capsule's heat shield as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere at high speeds similar to those experienced by spacecraft returning from deep space. The occasion also marked the announcement three years ago by President Obama of his goals for NASA and space exploration, including sending humans to an asteroid, something Orion could do as early as 2021. Deputy Administrator Lori Garver addressed attendees of Gathering for Impact the third International Academy of Astronautics Planetary Defense Conference in Flagstaff, Arizona. The five-day event addressed strategies for deflecting an asteroid and civil defense response should impact threaten. Well, NASA is all about uh, leaving the world a better place, so leaving it uh, intact is a, is a good benefit that we can help with. Also included was an outing to nearby Meteor Crater, one of the best-preserved meteorite impact sites in the world. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope has discovered three super-Earth-sized planets in their star's habitable zones, a region where liquid water might exist on the planet's surface. The smallest of the three is only 40% larger than Earth and most likely rocky in composition. Two of the planets orbit a star known as Kepler-62, located 360 light-years from Earth. The other revolves around Kepler-69, which is approximately 2,700 light-years away. Aboard the International Space Station, a spacewalk by Russian flight engineers Pavel Vinogradov and Roman Romanenko to deploy and retrieve several science experiments and install a new navigational aid on the Zvezda service module. The retro reflector device will provide docking assistance for the arrival of the European Space Agency's Albert Einstein Automated Transfer Vehicle 4 cargo ship in June. The spacewalk, the 167th in support of space station assembly and maintenance, is the seventh for Vinogradov and the first for Romanenko. Teams of high school and college students are geared up for the 20th annual Great Moon Buggy Race, April 25th through 27th, at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville. Hosted by the Marshall Space Flight Center, the event encourages young people to develop and use skills in science, technology, engineering, and math to build and race lightweight human-powered buggies. NASA hopes these students will pursue careers in STEM fields to benefit the agency, the nation, and humankind. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope celebrated its 23rd anniversary by once again focusing on the iconic Horset Nebula, but this time with the infrared eyes of its Wide Field Camera 3. Imaging the nebula in infrared revealed features previously hidden by gas and dust. About 1,500 light years away, the Horset lies in one of the closest and most commonly photographed regions of space, where stars are actively forming. The image is a preview of the infrared output expected from Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, set to launch in 2018. Twelve years ago, on April 19, 2001, Space Shuttle Endeavour launched from Kennedy Space Center on STS-100 to deliver Canadarm-2 to the International Space Station. 
used to lift and move hardware and spacewalking astronauts, the Canadian-built robotic arm, a longer, more capable version of the shuttle's robot arm, played a critical role in completing assembly of the space station. The mission also delivered supplies to the station with the Italian-built Raffaello multi-purpose logistics arm. And that's this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories or to follow us on Flickr, Ustream, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.